someone burned down your house with you inside. Do you know anyone that would do this? I had had a meeting with Lauren Newsetter at Hello Sunshine, and she, we'd had this like great meeting and hit it off. And at the end of the meeting, she's like, "Just send me a list of like everything you like to write or read or what you're into, and I'm gonna give it to Reese, and we're gonna try to find something to do with you." So I sent her this very eclectic list. <laughs> I mean, it was like a real mix. It was like, you know, I love like mountain climbing disaster stories, and I love like crystal meth addict memoirs, but with like a hopeful ending. And I love Tanya Harding. And I'm just, anything you could think of was on this list. Um, but I said, I love dysfunctional mother-daughter stories, especially where kind of the daughters triumph over their circumstances. And all of a sudden I got a call from Lauren and she was like, I'm sending you a book tonight. You need to read it in 24 hours and let me know if you want to do it. And so, you know, I started it. Pretty quickly in the book, I was like, I'm in. And then I read like 50 more pages. And then I called her and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in, but I have to still finish the book. And then I read the rest of the book and just, you know, sobbed my face off at the end and felt like I had just been given this huge opportunity. One day you wake up and your life is settled and you know who you are, or at least you think you do. The most exciting was assembling the writer's room and the group of people that I adapted it with. Um, you know, obviously I get to have a hand in every episode, but each of, you know, we each had our own episode that we wrote. And it was the collaboration and the collective of voices and, and life experience um, in ways that we all, I think, connected on so many levels to this book that was probably the most exciting and the most um, uh, in a way, life-changing. I mean, I really came out of the room a different person than when I went in. Um, and then the most challenging, I guess, burning down a house is a big deal. Um, there are things sometimes you can write in a book that's just like a quick little sentence, but when you have to see it on screen, you're like, Okay, we got to make this work. Um, those were probably like the biggest challenges. Like definitely in the room we were like, and then the house gets burned down and we're going to deal with that later. Um, you know, and we're like, and somehow this whole thing ends. And just, just you know, really wanting the art to have a real arc in the book. Um, almost thinking of the art as its own character. So anyway, but, but those challenges are what's exciting. I mean, that's the, that's the fun part. Yeah. That's why you want to do it. I've been meaning to hire someone for my house. Just to do a little light cleaning, some laundry. You mean to be your maid? I meant more of a house helper. What both of them are doing is so unique. I think Reese, you know, she starts off as Elena, and you see an Elena that has a familiarity. Where we've seen Reese in that kind of type A, get things done. She's a mom. She's efficient. She's a planner. That's something I think we're familiar with. And then I think where the show goes takes us to the unfamiliar and the unknown and the darker, more raw, more vulnerable. And then Carrie on the other side, I mean, she is playing this strong, fierce um, artist who doesn't play by anyone's rules. It felt like Mia was a real person in the world. I mean, even when we weren't shooting, I still felt like Mia was there. Um, she always had her camera around her. She just embodied Mia in this beautiful way. Carrie's Mia didn't try to make it okay for Elena. She let Elena, if Elena dug herself into a hole, Car Mia didn't feel the need to get down there and pull her out of it. And I felt like that was such a, that's such a brave character, and I feel like it's it's something we're not used to seeing. We're used to women making it okay. Um, black women making it okay for white women. Oh, I'm sure you didn't mean that. It's okay. I'm going to help you. I'm going to save you. Um, and she didn't do that, and I thought that's what was so great about that character. She, she wasn't there to coddle and mother them. She was there to mother her own daughter, um, and that's where the boundary was. This is Mia, everyone. She's new to Shaker. Hi, Mia. Hi. <laughs> Do you even know anything about this woman? I saw her sleeping in her car. You rented to a homeless person. You know what felt good? Helping. Shaker is really its own character in terms of the planning, the thoughtfulness. You know, there was a great line that said, if Elena were a town, she'd be Shaker Heights. And if Shaker Heights were a person, it would be Elena. And I think there's just an order, um, a well-intention to Shaker Heights. 
And then I think there's also deep implications underneath. And, and to me, that's what's so great about the show. Um, you know, just this idea of like the grass can't be more than six inches and someone comes on a scooter to pick up your trash and everything has to look a certain way. A duplex needs to look like a single family home because we don't want to make people feel less that they live in a duplex or we, we want to seem like, you know, this neighborhood is of a certain stature. So it, it, there's a lot about facade and I think it's you know the show is kind of peeling back the layers and and removing that facade and seeing what's underneath a good mother makes good choices you didn't make good choices you had good choices I also wanted to touch on Lynn Shelton when did she come into the picture and, and what about her work spoke to you in a way that you knew she'd be the right fit for this well um Lynn and I had worked on Casual before, and so I knew her from Casual, so I was very excited about that. Um, and then she also worked on Morning Show, and so we had a lot of kind of cross paths of connectivity. And um, she came on kind of, I mean, at the point where we were looking for a director as the final episodes were being written, and she was so passionate about the show. I think she related so much, especially to Mia, um, and she had her own path as a photographer and artist, and I think it just really spoke to her. And we're a lot of moms making a show about motherhood, um, and Lynn is a mom who has her own relationship to motherhood, and I think that was really exciting, too. So yeah, it was it was a great fit, and and actually, through Lynn, I felt like not that we wouldn't have found her on our own anyway, but Lynn also was so connected to Rose Marie, mm -hmm. um, and she was obviously on David Rubin, our casting director's list. But I feel like having that connection from Lynn and bringing on Rose, it just made Linda McCullough, I think, even more multi-dimensional and nuanced. And so it was also really cool to see their history and, and relationship at play. The biggest thing is there's a Moody Pearl story that I feel like was really inspired by Brett Kavanaugh and the horror of that whole thing, of this idea of um, not erasing a girl's experience because um, you're experiencing something else. I think what what about that story felt so painful was that you felt like there were these guys who were completely having their own good time, completely unaware that somebody was um, in such pain um, in the same room with them. And that's something, I mean, that is something that as a mom of a son, like, we got to teach that.